Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the Lego Minecraft The Crafting Box 3.0. It's the third set of this general set concept that they've come up with uh, to date. And I have purchased two of the set because they changed things a little bit this time, making it officially a two-in-one set, though there are plenty of options for things you can do with the parts included beyond those two official builds. But here are the two official builds. So I'll show you each one individually and each one does use all the parts in the set which is pretty cool so let's start with the b model the alternate sort of an interesting thing that they've done with both official models is place them onto 32 by 32 stud squares so basically the exact same size of space as a regular base plate a little bit nostalgic with that uh, it's just not something that they've really done with the minecraft sets I don't mind it. It's interesting and of course it's very easy to customize something like this to change things around. So I just wanted to give you a general general look at the overall size of it. So obviously they put the main structure which is a player built structure all the way at the back and then you have quite a lot of open space which just gives you some terrain, some basic terrain. A lot of terrain in Minecraft is flat so it totally makes sense. And it's very easy to access, though it's not as interesting looking as stuff that's all built up. So we've got just a little bit of farming going on over here. And they've got the water going right down the center of it. They're focusing more on uh, lanterns now rather than torches everywhere, which totally makes sense. Mostly just for the aesthetics. And this one puts, <laughs> well, I mean, you can put the individual little things absolutely wherever you want. Uh, if you haven't seen them before, these 2 by 4 jumpers are a thing they're not new for this uh, season they started them with the previous series of minecraft sets that they came up with uh, this is either an oak or a very small spruce i think it's supposed to be an oak and then you got a small birch tree back there it looks like one birch tree at least has been cut down to create some of the bits for the fence to go around here so you've got also a gate right there just able to open up with the most modern style that they use for that so that's been turned into a small pen for the, the pig back there a couple of traditional torches back there and a little bit of water so that the pig can have something to drink even though in minecraft the animals don't need to drink water but that's okay you know they're trying to trying to give a little more a little more care a little more thought uh towards the the non-hostile mobs in in this i appreciate that so this has some stairs going up to the main structure here, the main building, the house, which has sloped sides to the roof, but then it's also flat on top. And that's that's all built up with just bricks, you know, regular big rectangular bricks. There are two by twos, there are two by fours, there are two by sixes. And, you know, there's, there's no plate wise construction to try to save uh, space and make things a little bit more complex and I appreciate that this has a lot of just basic bricks in it and that means that you can easily turn this into many other things now the floor of the house is is lifted up it is elevated up uh, it does have a plate based floor so you can see a little bit around the side it also has windows to let plenty of light in and that includes the whole row of windows going across the back. It's supposed to represent glass panes, hence the indent. The entire roof can easily be removed thanks to jumpers and tiles used on this surface right here. And they've got uh, a number of modules which are shared between the two official models. So you can see back there is a furnace and they've got the bed done in the blue color as the base this time. And then inside, anvil, stone cutter, that's new, just using a couple of quarter round one by one tiles that are placed between studs, a legal technique once again these days. Crafting box, and that's that. And you can easily move some stuff around because they do have some studs available in there um, and also some tiled spaces so you can easily put minifigures in there at diagonals and have them rotated around and you know pose them in many different ways or just move individual blocks and items around the door doesn't have any special mechanism it just has a hinge so it opens up which is basically all you need do wish that there was something to keep it from doing that though you know just so that it would always close perfectly 
right to there, which sometimes it doesn't. But that's totally a nitpick. Overall, I mean, this is fully an effective build. There's nothing special about it. But, yeah, you know, it's it's basic, but pretty good for Minecraft, Minecraft stuff. Uh, the TNT, I don't know why it's there, but uh, they have it. The only action feature that's built into this, this time, is not for TNT, although... If you want, you could hook it up with TNT. So right now I've got the creeper here. And the idea, for me at least, was that the creeper would explode right here. But you could replace that with TNT if you want. If you must, if you want to be wantonly destructive. This is a little, little plunger over here, which is just going to knock off some of the, the bricks. So this is a modular piece that can be placed here. And just break some of these off. And then you can just imagine the water spilling down. So yeah, that's that. The main model has a distinctively medieval feel to it with a nice castle tower or turret back there. And it even has a moat. So you can just imagine that this is practically a river that has been either created or just conveniently used here. Maybe a little bit of space has been filled in by the players who wanted to create a little bit of separation between themselves and the rest of the occasionally hostile outside world. But you can see the same modules being used here in some cases. So that's the exact same birch tree as before. This time there's a little bit of slightly more natural farming going on just out in the land. Uh, the pig is just wild, you know, hasn't been captured properly yet. And there's that exact same probably small oak tree and the same pieces used for the fence back there. So there's one bag. It's bag one that has all the pieces for all of the common stuff the regular stuff that they suggest you reuse and another thing that is common is that door right there which i'm perfectly fine with i mean it's a door it's a wooden door and it, it, it looks just fine um so this one has its windows downstairs but not everything has windows so there are some open spaces but just looking up here first because it's more convenient this time the tnt thing is up here and it's used more as a launcher. It's more used as a, a offensive weapons system. So TNT is going to get kicked off out uh, in basically across the river. It's going to get shot out here and use it to, to try to shoot at the, the hostile mobs as they show up. This is a slightly funky looking roof bit over here. You have a little bit of overwatch area, kind of a balcony where you can stand out there. There's one of the windows in use and coming around the back, you can see the interior space, which is not much, right? That's the bedroom. It just has a bed. It's a room with a bed. No, uh, no windows on the other side of that one. Here's the, the, the chests. Uh, I guess you can kind of use this as a ladder of sorts. I don't know. It would have been nicer to, to see more of a proper ladder to actually get up there or at least steps. You know, they have, they have a suggestion, they have a start but they don't finish it off. So, so far this is not looking as good to me as the other build, not as, as complete. It's like it's stretching the pieces a little bit farther. Now here you have the, the ladders, right? The ladder pieces that were in the chest in the other build. Well, they're here. Let's take off these roof segments, which are once again modular, so you can easily just, you know, swap them around if you want. Move that guy out of the way. Who is he? What is he doing there? There you go, that comes off. And then this comes off. And then if, if you must, it's rather easy to just take this entire thing out as a block. And then there you see the rest of the modules. This one plate right here is distinctively darker than the others. That green, uh, that happens sometimes with green. And also amongst some of the tan pieces, this is also not a new thing. But from some angles, hopefully you can see that some of them are not only a little bit darker, but also a different hue. So the lighter ones, some of the lighter ones are more greenish, interestingly. Let me just pull all of this out as well. I think there were some, not as many on this stack. And the top ones are a little bit different, but that's a little bit more consistent. Yeah, just, you know, consistency is not as good as LEGO fans would like that to be, just with the, the colors these days. The minifigs here are just a Steve and an Alex. And, uh, well, because I've been following this series since its inception, I am tired of seeing Steve's and Alex's. There's, you know, there's, there's no difference between them. They just occasionally put armor on one or the other. Um, you know, the, the weapons are the weapons, the tools are the tools. 
but I personally would just like to see more and more and more different player skins made available. Now granted, this is the only official LEGO Minecraft set of this season or of this release wave. They also did one for Minecraft Dungeons, but that's a different game. So I do think it is fair for them to put a Steve and an Alex in each wave. And it just turned out this time that, well, they're the only ones. So to me personally, that's a little bit boring. Do note that the Steve here has much better printing than some of them have in the past. Uh, Lego seems to have made a change at, at some point, once again, to start printing light colors against dark colored plastic better. So it's more opaque. And in this case, the, the skin tone in the face for Steve is actually brighter than for Alex. Uh, it's, it's not as obvious when you have a print against a light colored plastic, uh, when it's not that good a quality, but when it's against a dark colored plastic, then it really shows through. So I'm okay with both of these, but I would like to see more consistency and the consistency should be aligned with this level of quality because this is right. This is what we want to see. This is what we pay Lego to do, making the colors look proper. As for the mobs, well, we've seen these before. Pig, creeper, and zombie. And that's that. So there's really not much to say about these, but these are perfectly fine. And of course, they are intended to be massable. So it totally makes sense in universe, as well as with toys slash collectibles, to have multiples of these. Last up, these are the leftovers or spares. And like I said, uh, each official build will leave you with exactly these. Each official build uses every official piece in the set. So you only get the leftovers that are just, well, they're just thrown in, you know? All told, I feel like Lego has done a pretty respectable job here. Granted, each of these builds does look rather simple. Uh, it's Minecraft, it's, it's blocky. They're relatively plain. And there aren't a lot of decorations, you know, little pieces that are added on here. But I appreciate the inclusion of so many two by twos, two by fours, and two by sixes, and also eight by eight plates and larger. So you can easily build a lot of different things with the pieces included in each of, or well, in one set. I won't say, I won't say each of these sets, but it's the exact same thing. You know what I mean? So many sets nowadays don't have many basic building blocks, basic building bricks. And that's one of the coolest things to me about Minecraft in Lego, Minecraft itself being a Lego-like thing, is that it wants to be blocky. It wants to just use two by twos and two by fours to build everything. So go for it. The possibilities are fantastic here. I'm not at all mad at Lego for only including official instructions for two official build versions here. I'm very proud of Lego for making each of these quantitatively the same. Each one uses all the official pieces in the set. That's fantastic. Uh, and they do give us a little bit of inspiration on the box over here for some other stuff. So that's all I can ask for. That's very, very nostalgic, very classic. I've asked in countless videos over the years for Lego to do more of that, you know, giving more possibilities, just, just inspiration without even including several pounds of, of tree pulp used to create a stack of all these different official instructions. So, no, there, there are compromises made here, but I think they are ultimately for the better. The only thing that I don't like here is the price, honestly. It's 560, where's that box? 564 pieces yeah, for $70 US. That's not a good price to part ratio, especially when you consider that most of the pieces here are just regular bricks. They're cheap. But by today's standards, when you look at the total volume of stuff, in one of these builds, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, kind of comes down to what do you want to pay for? What do you want to use? Um, there's so much rebuildability in this set of parts and that has value. It has a lot of value to me personally. Um, but by today's standards, the level of detail here is <laughs> practically non-existent. You know, it's almost like a like a neoclassic line. Like they've, they've managed to create here a classic castle line or something like that, uh, putting it under a different, a different moniker and 
putting out lots of basic bricks. It's kind of funny how that's worked out, but I, I like the classic nature of it. I, I personally like to just put bricks on top of bricks and build something up. It's almost like nowadays, between what LEGO does and just the peer pressure of the online mock world and, you know, the ease of, of somebody putting months, if not years, into a single creation and then just doing a quick five minute video about it and then that goes viral. And then all of us watching that just, you know, don't even watch all five minutes. We just watch maybe 30 seconds or a minute of it. And that is, you know, one minute that actually represents months of somebody's, somebody's work. It's kind of just changed our, our perspectives on what is Lego custom building. You can custom build with just basic bricks and you can enjoy it. And Minecraft makes it canonical even to do that. It's right to do that. That's, a, that's something that's really special about Lego Minecraft in particular over all other themes that they have done for many decades now. So it's a pretty cool thing. It inspires me a bit. I do wish that this set was a bit cheaper and not just five bucks, more like uh, 10 bucks based on the quantitative analysis of what's actually here. The overall size and the play value, it, it's okay. But it is mostly basic bricks and those aren't that expensive. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, if you wanna see how either of these was built up, I did record the pure build of each version. Uh, if they're not up by the time you're watching this, they should be up very soon. I did live recordings of them and you'll also be able to see the speed builds if you don't wanna sit there listening to the bricks being put together. It's kind of a cool thing to put, in, put on in the background. Unless you don't have time for that, then check out one of the speed builds. But thank you for watching this. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope I showed you, you know, some stuff that you wanted to know about this set and I'll talk to you again soon.